clasped my hands behind my back. Three men came in with black masks that only showed their eyes. It was then that the circle of torture began. They cut off my clothes with some kind of doctor's scalpel. I was totally naked. One of them took my penis in his hand and began to make cuts. They must have done this 20, 30 times maybe in two hours. 18 months of this and other torture, he says, brought him to breaking point. They kept reading out to me and saying, if I could say this story as we read it, you will just go to court and all this torture will stop. I could not take any more of this torture and I eventually repeated what was read out to me. They told me to say that I had been with Bin Laden five or six times. Of course, that was false. They told me to say I had told Bin Laden about places that should be attacked. That was false too. They told me to say I had sat with Osama Bin Laden's top people. That was a lie too. All this comes from notes made by Binyam in Guantanamo, where he's now held. He could, of course, have made the whole thing up. What makes you convinced that he's telling the truth? The reason I'm convinced by Binyam about the torture he's gone through is things I've seen. I've seen marks on him that I believe are probably proof of, uh, of what he went through. And I don't pretend to be omniscient, that I would be extraordinarily surprised uh, if Binyam wasn't telling the truth about his torture. And then there were the flights. Binyam has told me the exact date that he flew from Pakistan to Morocco. After I'd written that down, got it unclassified so it's on paper, then I get to cross-check that against the physical logs of those CIA flights and bang, it's right on. Flight logs. Physical proof too that the Polish airstrip landings were CIA flights. The same Gulfstream which flew Binyam to Morocco, the N379P flew here, secretly, and not once, but repeatedly. It's the first time these flight logs have been filmed. Golfstream N N three hundred seventy nine P. Golfstream N three hundred seventy nine P. But the Gulfstream wasn't the CIA's only rendition plane to land in Poland. Gulfstream. Golfstream. There was a Boeing. Yeah, there's Boeing. What's your Boeing? Westrugi Yes. Oh, it was Skont. Dobrze. Skont. Kabul. Kabul. Tak. After the Gulf Streams, the Boeing N313P, apparently carrying businessmen from Afghanistan. Raz nas poinformowano, że 22 września będzie miało miejsce lądowanie w Indii. On the 22nd of September, a Boeing 737 was to land. I had serious doubts about it because the airport was unprepared to accept this type of plane. Tego typu statków powietrznych, bo to jest duży statek. Somehow it managed to land. Then these cars with tinted windows approached, and then the plane took off. So who were they behind those tinted windows that September 2003? No one talked then of the secret CIA prisons in Poland. It didn't occur to anyone that it might have something to do with transporting prisoners. No, I think that that may have been possible. All the rigmarole surrounding the flights. The fact that we couldn't see what was happening. That the planes just had to be accepted for landing. To me, it now seems likely. To wydaje mi się to prawdopodobne. 
That same Boeing would soon fly Binya Muhammad, the young Muslim asylum seeker from Kensal Rise, on his second rendition from Morocco to Kabul in Afghanistan. It was January 21st or 22nd, 2004. About 10 p.m., I heard a plane. There were five U.S. soldiers in black and gray with face masks. They did not talk to me. They cut off my clothes. There was a white female with glasses. One of the soldiers held my penis, and she took digital pictures. She was one of the few Americans who ever showed me any sympathy. When she saw the injuries I had, she gasped, and she said, Oh my God, look at that. The sympathy was short-lived. Binyam was left to face new tortures. And the Boeing took off again this time to a tranquil Spanish seaside resort. With Binyam delivered, it was time for the CIA rendition crew to pack their masks and black working clothes away and relax in a luxury hotel. The Marriott's records show they used the spa, had a massage, ordered shrimp cocktail and Baileys, incognito, anonymous undisturbed. But there's no rest for the wicked. The very next day they were off again for another rendition nearby. But not before their strange Boeing was snapped by local plane spotters. The plane looked like a business plane, so I took a picture of it because I'd never seen a plane like that in Palma before. Had he not spotted the Boeing in the few hours before it left, the story of the CIA's flights might never have come out. He put his Boeing picture on the web and soon got a call. German TV got in touch with me and told me that they had this incredible story about a person who says he was kidnapped in this plane and tortured and held for six months in Kabul. This is the man with the incredible tale, now back home in Germany. My name is Khalid El Masri. Since 1994, I've been a German citizen. And this was the Khalid El Masri found wandering in Albania in May 2004, after he'd been to hell and back. Kidnapped, flown to Kabul, and six months later dumped by the CIA in an Albanian forest. They pulled me off the bus. Took off my blindfold and uncuffed my hands. Then they said, don't look behind you. I saw this path in the wood. It was lonely and dark. I thought, they'll let me take a few steps and then they'll shoot me in the back. He saw a man and begged for help. I told him I'd been abducted by the CIA and that they'd taken me to Afghanistan. He started to laugh and told me not to tell anyone this, as people would make fun of me. The CIA had met their match. The world's most powerful intelligence agency rumbled by the humble plane spotter and a German TV crew. They didn't believe him and thought he just wanted to become famous and get on television. And they said my picture could be the proof that he was telling the truth. It proved just that. Khaled El Masri's story was incredible, but the date squared. In December 2003, three weeks before the Boeing showed up in Mallorca, this German car dealer was pulled off a bus on the Macedonian border and arrested. Khaled El Masri, who had no history of crime or terrorism, was imprisoned in Macedonia's capital, Skopje, in this hotel, on no charge, 
refused a lawyer or consular help or a phone call home and told if he confessed he was Al-Qaeda, he could go. He refused. After three weeks, he was taken to the airport where the Boeing crew were waiting, fresh from Mallorca, and this German citizen was handed to the CIA. The assistant had me said, I would be in a neighborhood. They told me I would be taken to another room and given a medical examination. I would have been reingeführt. I was taken inside. The door was closed and then blows rained down on me from all sides. They ripped off my clothes with a sharp implement. Then I heard them.